Welcome everybody to the inaugural episode of the Creative Business Design Lab with me, Jessica Abel, and my guest, Victoria Lansford. I'm really happy to see so many people here. And oh my goodness, our multi-passionate website, something you guys are worried about. I asked for questions. <laughs> Silly me. I got like 35 questions. I usually get like one or two, you know, and it's like everybody's asking questions. So we have a lot to talk about people and I'm excited to talk about it all. Here's what I'm going to do. Victoria and I are going to talk first about her process going through with her website. Uh, Charlene Lamb is here also. She is also somebody I've been helping with her website very similarly. So I may invite her up as well. Um, if you're ready to do that, Charlene, let me know. If not, uh, let me know that too, so that I don't. Um, and the, um, the, uh, questions. I've tried to basically organize my answers as much as I can uh, into sort of groupings. Um, and I may miss things. If you have questions that are not getting, so I'm going to address those sort of with Victoria, but then also afterwards. And then um, if your question's not getting answered, what I would ask you to do is to use the raise hand tool, which if you can, um, you see this when you uh, go to your name under participants, you can raise your hand there. And there's also, I think there's a way to do it under like underneath your Zoom window or something like that. Anyway, um, how do we do raising hands? We go under more. No, we don't. Anybody know? <laughs> I haven't used this particular tool before. Um, reactions, do it, reactions. reactions, yes, under reactions. There we go. Reactions under your screen there. Reactions, raise your hand and then lower your hand if your question gets answered. You can raise it to be like, I have something that I want to ask. And then if I happen to answer it in the meantime, then lower it so we can make sure we cover as much as we can. Okay. So let's get started because we have a lot to do here. All right. So Victoria, thank you for being here. Thank you for being my guest today. Do you want Thanks to talk about, tell me, tell me a little bit about how multi-passionate you are. Tell me about all of the things that you do. Uh well, as you know, I can't stand being pigeonholed. Um, e even in one of the areas I work, I hate being pigeonholed as the person who does that one thing, uh, <laughs> which is, yeah, torturous from a marketing standpoint. I've never been able to resolve it until you uh, started pushing me toward the way the website is currently being restructured and re uh, redoing the navigation. Um but I, to name a few things, I'm a metalsmith. I specialize in ancient techniques, but for contemporary application, I teach. Um, thanks to the incubator, I now have an online school. Instead of running around all over the country teaching workshops frantically, I now can teach long, slow courses online. Um, I'm also an illuminator, a painter, and a calligrapher, focusing mostly on miniatures, but even those kind of run the gamut. So, the, so you know, if you put all my work together, people assure me that you can tell there's a visual thread that runs through them. I but agree. Really, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I do worry about that, but um, but but really, there, there's there's a lot that comes out, and then I'm also a writer, um, and I um, and I produce instructional videos. Uh, so it's- it, it We're getting a picture. We're getting like the range here. There's like a lot. Okay. So it, let's it, jump in. It's kind of like the Zoom view I see with everybody in it. It's, yeah. It's, yeah it's, my life is a collage. Of so I'm going to do manner. something really embarrassing first. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. No. <laughs> I had to go. I didn't, because I didn't think I was going to, I didn't know I was going to do this session. I didn't like screen grab your site before we started working on it. And so I had to go to the Wayback Machine to- find an old site of yours, which is beautiful. I mean, they're always good looking, right? So it's not that. And it's because it's the Wayback Machine, it's a little crunky. It's not exactly right. It, your real site didn't look like this. It didn't have a big black box here. But this is um, this is a, an archival site from 2019. And what you had here is you, at the top, you had a, a navigation about shop, blog, workshops, video gallery, contact cart, giving voice, tools and videos. And these all have drop downs as well. Art jewelry collections, art objects, metal work illuminations. It wasn't like this when we started. It was a little cleaner than this, but it was like, this is the kind of thing where it was like lots of different topics. And if you go down the page, there are beautiful photos of your work, you know, uh, prices on it. And again, 
we all need to acknowledge this is not what the, the site actually worked and looked beautiful. This is like an archived version. Um, but then about art, jewelry, crafting, and art full life, not only jewelry, other stuff, the book, techniques, blog, <laughs> it just keeps going and going and going. And that was a, <laughs> that was a, um, you know, the main thing that we talked about uh, that I would want to get to here is that we talked about the idea of making sure people knew where they, like people could identify themselves. And this is the number one concept I want to give to everybody here today is the job of your website is to speak to certain people. Sometimes it's one group of people. In your case, it's two groups of people who have groups of interests, right? And it's the website is not a Wikipedia of you, right? There's other places for like all of the stuff you've ever done, like Wikipedia or like just your CV or, you know, your archives or like a retrospective gallery show or something like that. I used to think about what a website should be is like Wikipedia of me, like literally everything I'd ever done. I was, I, I had a list of things I was going to post to my website, like older comics that had not been reprinted or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, next week I'll post this one. And I'll post it. Nobody ever looked at them. Like nobody wanted those things. Um, but I just felt like they needed to be in that place, you know? And so the idea of uh, like just changing my mindset about what is it, what is a website for? website is not for you. Your website is for the visitor and it's for uh, like helping them identify themselves and go, I'm in the right place and then be able to find the thing that they want and do the thing that they want to do. And sometimes you're telling them about something they haven't, they didn't even know was the answer for what they want to do. And so you're introducing them to new things, but they still have to be able to go like, I'm in the right place. I know where I should be, that I'm, I'm here, whatever. So what we came up with was this division, learn and collect. How do you feel about that? I, I'm kind of excited about it. I mean, when, when you came up with it, all of a sudden I could see that everything I want to have be there can be there, but what I'm restructuring is the navigation to funnel people where they need to go and to then engage with me the way I want them to engage. So it wasn't about, you know, chopping off or hiding parts of me. It was about giving people a clear path to the things that they're likely to buy. Right. And you want, and like with a website, you want to have uh, people's expectations matched at the top of the page. Then you can expand, but you want people to understand where they are and go, oh, that's me. Oh, I'm in the right place. Then they can follow your learning path through the things that you're revealing in your website, but they're not going to do that if they get to the front of it and they're just like, I don't know, I guess, you know? So this is a, it's a lovely video. And I love this because I had not seen any of your instructional stuff before I saw this. And so this is both uh, beautiful and also really impressive. And so I love having this little video here because it's like, this is, this is the actual jewelry and it's the teaching. So this combines the two, but what did we do with this video, Victoria? Uh, Sorry, did you say what did we do or what, what did we, we do, do with the video? Was the video like this when we started? Uh, well, I chopped half of it off. Right. And so, what, so yeah, <laughs> the 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 part of, uh with the interactive book I have, I just I, I'm now redoing that page so that um I mean, and that's a little bit of an you know add on also kind of thing that people might buy. It's not necessarily why they're coming to the site. Um, even if it was my ultimate passion project and took I know, like eight years of my life, um, <laughs> it's not why they're landing here. So, so we cut it off. And there, there is one more bit that you gave me permission to integrate into this, but I haven't had time to redo it because I've got to reshoot it. And that is a little bit of gold leaf gilding on the paintings, which then ties the metalwork to the paintings that would be at the end of the part that you're seeing right now. So, so right. The, it, so it's this video with like a few more seconds to kind of wrap that up, which I was happy about. I mean, that gives me a way to literally spell it out to people to integrate. And I have to say, there's this thing that's going on with my website. I mean, I literally had to leave WooCommerce tech support chat to say, I have to go give an interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys fix this problem. And if you look at that image on the right of the mouse, my 
the, every new product image I put in is grayed out. Mm -hmm. So I just have to say, she's really colorful. Her wings are really turquoise. She's not this gray green haze. Um, but it seems like everything I have gone in and tried to do for other deadlines, but also for today, I've had some kind of massive tech drama going on with those plugins for, well, I don't know, a week. I, yeah. I mean, it's an ongoing thing. And I think understanding too, that a website is a never finished and B is always going to have something breaking because tech changes is just part of your like coming to terms with a website. <laughs> you know, you just have to understand that that's the case. There's stuff in my site that's broken and that I haven't fixed. And, you know, like we're due for a big, you know, not an overhaul, like in terms of the whole branding, we did that like a year and a half ago or two years ago, and I'm happy with it, but you know, we've added all this stuff and now the navigation's all crazy and you just have to schedule regular maintenance. It's not something you finish. Um, and that's important, I think. So yeah, so we have learn and we have collect and then read latest posts. So we know that this is a blog. That's what we're looking at. We have the latest one here, a couple more here, and that's it. That's it. That's the entire homepage. So this is the, I love the way this is working out. I still have a few things that I'm, you know, I'm like, not crazy about that. You know that, but also I can't, I, yeah, I gotta, that's a tech problem I gotta solve. Right. But like this, this is the help stuff. And this is where I would look for help. If I was going to a site, I would look in the footer. And instead of having a bunch of stuff up here about help, it's down here. Um, and uh, you have your, you know, social feeds very subtly, but available here. All of that stuff works really well for me. And then Within the um, collect page, which is the one we've been looking working on more actively, you have your jewelry collections, your objet d'art, your sculptural metalwork, and your works on paper. So now we have headers for like what are these things, and we have an image of like what are we talking about, and so that kind of invitation into this. So and 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 this is another thing I want to point out here. You've done a really nice job with call to value buttons. So you guys have all probably heard of a call to action. So call to action is click here, you know, uh, buy now or like that kind of thing. A call to value is a twist on that where it's um, appropriate for a button that's a little bit less like transactional. You don't wanna have a call to value uh, that's confusing on a buy button. You want people to know that they're going to buy, like that's what's happening like check out now, pay now. Like that's something that you want to make sure is very clear. But a call to value is like uh, a different, it's a different feel to it. And you want to have the, uh, frequently you want the call to value to be related to your crosshead. So art jewelry collections, art to wear, you know, jewelry to wear, right? And the way you uh, come up with uh, call to value buttons is you use in your mind, you use the phrase or in your development of this in your writing, I want to blank. I want to do something. Um, or I want, I want art to wear. So it can be, I want, or I want you to. So call to value can also be me saying to you, I want you to wear art, you know, like that would be the phr phrasing if it were the other way around, but you want the person it's in first person. Um, and they're saying, I want art to wear. I want art to hold. I want art for big spaces. I want art for my home. Very clear, what is the value I get from this? Art for my home works on paper. This is gonna be something I can hang on the wall. I can do something with it in that way. Um, Objet d'art is like sort of confusing. What is that? But I know now I can hold it in my hand, right? So that's giving me the information I need in order to move through that. And this is where your ebook is too, I believe under this heading. Is that right? Or are you still working on that? Maybe it, it, it should be. I don't know if it is yet. I have to give a shout out here too. The, the brilliant copywriting on this page is by my fellow hatchling from the incubator, Retz Woods. Um, we, she really worked with me and, um, you know, did, did an interview, took all kinds of stuff I had written to try to create this comprehensive description that's still about the customer or at least attractive to the customer which is really hard when you're dealing with a call to value and not so much a call to action so yeah go Reds. <laughs> yeah she did a fantastic job with that and she's a, a really really great copywriter so she's um she's been excellent okay so let's look at so we're in this collect page now we're going to go to the art jewelry I'm not, we're not going to go through every page here but now we're again we're going through 
the individual collections and you know uh you have a few examples of things from the collection you talk about what is the you know sort of reasoning and the behind it you know what's your feeling and thought behind this collection and then again i want to explore the gal the galaxy i want to step through the arch these are evocative in a way that feels appropriate for the material where it's not like I mean, step through the arch. What is that? You know, it's not necessarily like that concrete, but it has that evocative feel of like the kind of soaring uh, jewelry that you want to, and the experience of wearing this jewelry that you want to to bring to people. So, um, yeah. So this looks really great. And then inside these collections, you know, so then we're we're doing many many clicks here, which I think is fine in this case because now we get to the actual pieces and are they available or not and how much do they cost and what do they look like and let me find all the details and each of these then has a product page inside of it you know with the with the actual details on the thing you can add to cart you can buy it you can share it all you know all great and we get multiple photos etc and here there's actually a an a video exploration of it which is really nice as well i mean when you have um, art jewelry with a high price point, you you really need to help people understand what is this thing like, especially if you're buying it online, you're not able to see it, hold it in your hand, you really want to get that concrete feeling about it. Um, yeah, oh, wait, I, I still have a lot more work to do on the, um, the, the if you, where you clicked to this from, because um, you had suggested that I have big feature images and things and, and one of the challenges I'm finding is, you know, I don't, I mean, I speak enough WordPress to deal with this. And um, second shout out is to Lou, who makes a lot of things work for me. <laughs> They've been phenomenal at, uh, at, at helping with some of the layout and, and uh, sort of co upgrading things. Um, but like with this page, you know, it does still have that very shopping cart feeling, which you'd pointed out in the loom that you had um done for me and I, I and the add to cart thing is still a problem um figuring out where those things live is always an adventure in wordpress and then mm -hmm. getting around the funnel that woocommerce or any kind of shopping cart system puts you through is i mean it's like a whole workaround i basically have to recreate this as a different kind of page and so that that will take time but i think that there's it, it, to me, there's a little bit of a of a contrast between the the lush big images you had me do in the previous levels, and then you know you get to this, and it's just like the big grid. So that is definitely something I'm hoping to um, uh, customize, shall we say? Yeah, and again, it's a process, right? It's a it's something that's going to take uh, time, and you can work with this as it is. An upgrade bit by bit, and so I think one of the things we get we get caught up in a sort of um, you know perfectionist spin about stuff, and it's important to go like it's this looks amazing, it looks great, it's not quite what you want it to be, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be sharing it and you shouldn't be proud of it. One thing I want to ask everybody to do is stop apologizing for your website. You're like, <laughs> oh, go to my website. Oh, it's so terrible though. No, please just stop. Like it is what it is. Just live with it. It's fine. You know, just <laughs> live with it. It's not like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear the apologies, you know, either <laughs> take it down and don't give it to me or don't apologize. Well, I feel like I, I have to give an explanation for why I haven't finished all of my homework, but um, well, no, no, I mean, in this case, we're actually talking about the, uh, the it's fine. And, you, you know, I, but going like if you're getting ready to do some like Black Friday sales and like to get people coming to your site and to get people enrolled in your courses. So, you know, under learn, which we haven't really looked at, and we're not going to go into too much detail here because I want to make sure we get through our questions. You know, here we have specific courses that are coming up you have a you know schedule you have testimonials and so on this is the um <laughs> the michael buble of teachers that's hilarious <laughs> michelle <laughs> buble yeah michelle buble so yeah i mean like you might want to put that right up here at top you know that's like <laughs> very funny and yeah. like gives us a sense of your you know your humor you know which is something that can get lost with the seriousness of your work you know the way it comes your teaching comes through so that's, no, that that's very true, and and I mean you're you're absolutely right. It, it I have had uh, a steady website since 
2003. I mean, I had one for a minute in the nineties and it kind of fell apart and, uh, no, wait, 2002, maybe. And, um, it, it has never, I have never at any point in all those years, 20 years gone. Okay. Well, it's done for a minute. I mean, uh-huh. it's always about tweaking it, but I will say that the, and yeah, you can't sit on it and not share it. And you're right. We, we shouldn't be apologizing for it. It's like, it's like when, when, when my students say, you know, oh, I finished this thing. And I say, when people tell you it's beautiful, just say, thank you. Don't say, oh, thanks. But I had trouble with the stone setting right here. But, you know, we always apologize. And yeah, most of the yeah. time people just want to see it, but, um, scheduling regular time and understanding that whenever I sit down to do anything, something, some plugin will be broken and make my life hell and build in the frustration time and not be down to the wire. That's the goals. But the, the constant tweaking is constantly tweaking the message to get the results that we're looking to get. It's not about having yep. a perfect website. It's about, you know, how can I, how can I say this better so that more people click yes, buy, enroll, whatever because that's what the website is for. I actually wrote a really long blog post, which I should have gotten the link to, uh, to get ready, but I didn't. So if anybody wants to find that, that's fine. So on my blog, when we relaunched our website, I actually went through and did screen grabs from the Wayback Machine of like all my websites since 1998. And a lot of, you know, sort of how they, they represent eras of my self, you know, who I was at that time. And, um, and I appreciate them all for that, you know, um, but they're <laughs> radically different. I had like, basically I've had four, three, four radically different websites over that time. Like the whole, everything looks totally different. And it really reflects where I was at in my, in my work. At one point I went from like this, you know, like really punk kind of like in your face website to this like white, nothing, no blog, no news. I was like, you know, had that period where I just closed off. Um, so yeah. All right. Let us move to the next phase here. Um, so I would also like to show Charlene's page. So I'm going to see if I can find you Charlene in here. There you are. And wait, everything's moving around. Hang on, hang on. Add pin. Here we go. There you are. Hello. I think I have Hi. to let you un- Oh, you can unmute. Okay, good. Oh, power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I am going to go over your site now, your changes, um, and we'll do a before and after because you're actually still in the middle of it. And so I do have the existing website um, to show, which will be great. All right. So I'm Charlene- updating in real time. Yeah. Charlene, why don't you really <laughs> quickly run through- your multi-passionate interests so people can understand what it is that you're dealing with, which is similar sure. but different from Victoria. Sure. Uh, so I'm a grief coach and the curator of the grief gallery. My work with grief actually started with the gallery side, though, of doing exhibitions about grief and loss after I lost my mother. And then previous to that, I was a communications consultant. So Jessica, there's another website that you probably haven't even seen. That's for the communications consulting side, but it's a whole separate one. Um, So I had the grief gallery and then I had my name. And in talking with Jessica, it was like, okay, I was very comfortable talking about the gallery aspect and exhibitions aspect. But if we're talking about business, what I wanted to do was to bring more people over to how they could actually work with me Mm -hmm. as either a grief coach or as a speaker Um, And as we'll see, um, we've been working on how to speak more directly to potential clients. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, exactly. All right. So let's take a look. Um, And you, you also uh, were very much, you, you're very involved as a speaker. And so a lot of this has that kind of feel to it. So this is the the existing site, the new one's about to go live, but hasn't yet. So here's charlenelam.com and speaker, grief coach, curator. So we know that, you know, grief coaching, grief resources, there's stuff here for people who are looking for something. But uh, what we say, see here is Charlene Lamb, grief expert. So if somebody's coming as a griever to your site, the first thing they see is, hey, it's Charlene, <laughs> you know, which they don't know they need Charlene yet. They know they need some help, but they don't know that they need Charlene, right? Um, and then we get into this thing about being a curator, lovely photos, the grief gallery, 
which again is like for some people, what is, you know, what's the relationship to this, for, to this from the fact that I'm in pain right now, you know? So trying to build those relationships in, um, this is an offer that you're putting together right now, or you're offering right now grief in the holidays. So this is for people who are really having a hard time with the holidays, the holiday season. Um, and it's a sort of, it's a personalized and direct package. And you want make sure you want to make sure people see this and that they see it now because it's very timely. It's really, you know, like when people are missing a loved one over the holidays, it's very pressing. Similar to Victoria, who, you know, is thinking about for the holidays, you know, people may want to buy beautiful gifts for their loved ones. Um, and so but the two of you are both working on this right now because of holiday crunch, because it's that like there's a timing thing going on. Um, and that you're a certified grief coach. So again, the question here, certified grief coach, is that the question I have as a griever? Are you certified or not? Probably not my first question, right? I want to be identifying myself. And so that's what we talked about there, grief resources, speaker and trainer. And again, it just kind of keeps going. What are all these things? There's lots of stuff. I don't know what to decide on. And then you also have the grief gallery. And these are both really beautiful websites that really function well. Um, but again, it's like, where where do I need to be? And one of the things you had already added earlier was get help for grief in the in the navigation of this site. So that if people show up here for whatever reason, they see this here. And then this grief coaching will link to your coaching page, uh, which may be on charlenelam.com. I'm not sure if right now it is or not, but you're, you're, you're like, basically you have two websites, two URLs, <clears throat> and they link back and forth to each other in the navigation. We'd already done that. Um, we'd already talked about that. So we have the grief gallery talking about what is it. And this, I think very properly, and this is you, you know, you know, talking with somebody at the grief, you know, in the grief gallery uh, and the monthly gathering around that. Different exhibitions and so on. So this, because this is about the grief gallery as a creative project, this is very properly focused on what is the grief gallery? You know, why is it significant? How did you come up with it? What's the history of it? Like all those kinds of things. Um, see the exhibition, why this, and then you have, this is more like, like a sort of visual artist site, you know, here are the things that you can get access to, but there's no, um, there are no strong calls to action in this page because it's not something you're trying to develop right now. If you were putting on a new exhibition, you might have a thing exhibition coming up. You should come. Here's why you want calls to action or calls to value for that matter, you know, for people to you know, get involved and to, to actually go to this exhibition, either virtually or in real life. So what we've talked about then is this is going to be the new version of your homepage. So how do you feel now about this? Um, it's clear, right, of the whole letting people self-identify um, what they need. Um, I did some research on what other grief coaches and grief experts have, and a lot of them do have this option, though their options are usually, I want help with grief, or I want to help someone who's grieving. Um, so I like that I'm giving them that option. Um, I do feel a little bit like, like, oh, but like I'm getting pitched for press and stuff. Should I be further up? I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I mean, you, like, I, I think that your, your speaking tab up here is going to give people an opportunity to, to do that. You might want to have a contact tab at the top where if anybody is just a, you know, skimmer who's a journalist and just wants to talk to you, they don't go have to go anywhere to do that. Mm -hmm. So having contact at the top might be, might make sense for you. Yes. And about, which I think the old page, I'm going to adapt to become the new about page. <laughs> Right. With the elements, exactly. Like, like pretty much what's, you know, the top part of this page, not everything necessarily, but the top part of this yeah. page could be your about page. Although we're going to talk about about pages in a minute. And I might also Ooh. recommend you do something slightly different than that. So um, the uh, yeah. So having maybe just having uh, an about uh, tab, not about and contact, but about, but have your contact in your about. Again, if you're thinking about somebody who's coming to this, not as a griever, not wanting for you for an event who would definitely go to the speaking tab, but they just want, they want you as an expert, you know, for an article or something like that, make it easy for them to find you. But that's not the majority of people, right? And people who are journalists, they're going to be totally used to finding whatever they need to find um, in, in order to contact you. And so as long as your contact information is here, they will find it. 
it's just better if you make it easier, more professional if you're like, hey, journalist, I love you, come help me. <laughs> you know, that's That all definitely is a positive. All right, so um, yeah, so here we have a big call to action or a big, you know, self-identifying, like I said, people know they're in the right place. Just like with Victoria's site, they're like, oh, I am grieving and struggling after a loss. I am not alone. You know, like I, now I know that I'm here with somebody who cares. Then we have help for grief here, feeling weighed down by all the stuff that comes with loss. So this is a, you know, uh, physical stuff, responsibilities, emotional stuff. It's a lot and you're not alone anymore. I'm Charlene. Right. So you have this conversation going on between you and the visitor. And so instead of starting with, hi, I'm Charlene, you know, that you're starting with, hi, here's you. I know you, I see you and I can help you. And here's why I can help you. And here's how I can help you. Um, this is really, uh, you know, and the fact that you are foregrounding that this comes out of your own recovery through grief. And then you also are all of these other things. This is all of your proof, social proof and other kinds of proof that you are the uh, expert that these people need, that you are empathetic, you get it, you come come to this through a very um, uh, personal place, but then also you are, you know, like you have what people need, you know, and you're going to be able to provide. Then you have your offer here. Now we've talked about possibly right now putting this up here, like, you know, not under, underneath you are not alone holiday offer. If you want people to really like, boom, see it right away, you might do that. But also you have an opportunity to just share this homepage itself, like going here. This is what you're sharing with people. You're not sending them to your homepage. You're sending them to this page. So that's something else we're going to talk about here. Where people are always asking about stuff like, <clears throat> well, what if I have, I was talking to another client the other day, what if I have, uh, I have painting, I have writing and I have coaching and they're all related to each other. Like they, they are, you know, the fact that you'd have the grief gallery is part of what proves that you are somebody who would be a very, have a particular point of view on grief coaching that may be very appealing to some people. So you do want it linked. You do want people to be able to find it. You do want us to have all of that sense of that's part of your authority, um, as well as just being interesting to people. Mm -hmm. But you can have, you can treat interior pages of your website. So even if you don't have, even if you didn't have a separate grief gallery website and it was inside the same website, you could create a sub page that is the home page essentially. So that in the context where you're showing up as an artist and as a curator, you share that page as your home page, as opposed to, you know, charlenelam.com or whatever else, right? Or the coaching page. Like this is not even just the coaching page. This is a sub page of the coaching page, essentially. Like functionally it is, even though, I mean, not literally in the URL. So um, having sub pages that are, that that look like home pages and function like home pages is a way to resolve that issue of having multiple things you want to talk about. Um, and you do know what your top, uh, your top priority is right now. You want to be selling the holiday care coaching package. Once that's over, you're gonna have to make a decision about like, what is the thing, like the most important thing you wanna put at the top. And if you have other smaller things that are popping up, you might put them there, whatever. But it's more likely that some smaller, that you're gonna have something more durable on your homepage. And then like, you'll be selling to say your email list with smaller offers. And then you'll be using an interior page a landing page for that rather than, you know, on the main page. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because the speaker page, like if I'm speaking to someone and networking at a speaking event, I would just send them directly to the speaker page because it's just charlenelamb.com slash speaker. Mm -hmm. And that has like a video and it has my like speaker PDF one pager to download. Mm -hmm. And I think as you're describing it, then I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to build a more robust coaching landing page so that if I'm speaking to someone and they're saying oh you know my sibling just lost a spouse and how can I tell them what you do as a coach then I can actually send them straight to like the coaching page which Although I think in this case have... I would say you could just send them to your home page because then they also get the reassurance like this is the primary thing I'm doing mm -hmm. like this is what I do there's a lot of aspects to it. I also speak, whatever, but the most vulnerable people you're dealing with, the people who are going to have the most questions are coaching clients, not right. people who are like speaking, uh, organizing speaking events, 
you know? So they, yeah. again, they're people who are expert in finding the information they need to find. And yes, you want to make it very clear and very obvious and helpful, but they know how to deal, you know, how to navigate this stuff. Whereas somebody who's yeah. grieving, you know, you want to make it as easy as possible for them to find what they need. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a question too, that if for those of us where our clients need a, a little bit more information, right? Like I think a coaching client would want to know, for instance, what's the difference between a coach and a therapist? So like I'm developing some content around that and the kind of frequently asked questions that I think would live on that coaching yep. page. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. You do want that for sure. Yeah. Those are the kinds of questions, you know, how long does it take? What kinds of, you know, basically what kind of outcome can I expect from this? How does the process work? You know, so you have very specific, a very specific approach through creative work and, and dealing with objects and stuff that I think you'd want to talk about there. Um, there's, you, you want to create a sales page that has this sort of typical sales page elements for your coaching specifically on that page. Um, and it is really important because again, like if you're trying to develop a new speaking business, if you've never done public speaking before, it can be a little hard to get your first few gigs. But again, like if you can get a video of you doing something at all, like event organizers are going to be like, great. You know, if you can go to your local, whatever, um, speaking club and do some talks, you, you've got to, you know, you've got your start with coaching. These are individual people and they're trusting you with something really, not just with money, but with themselves, you know, with something that they really, in your case, it's like they're in pain. In other cases that people have some kind of aspiration, they have something they want and they are trusting that you can deliver that. And so there's a lot of work you need to do around demonstrating how you do what you do, why, and, and, and helping people identify like, yes, I am in a position to benefit from this. Um, I am the right kind of person to be involved in this. So somebody who's not interested in like creative exploration would not be a good client for you. And you want to make sure that people identify, go like, well, different, a different grief coach might be the right person for me. Cause I just don't, it's too foofy. I can't do that. <laughs> you know, I'm like, fine, you know, whatever not for you, you know, and you want people to be able to go away cleanly, you know? Um, yeah. Question for those of us who, you know, are creatives and then who offer coaching, whether it's helping people to develop their own web comics or to, you know, develop their, co their creative businesses. Mm -hmm. And part of that sales process is eventually having them book a call with us. Mm -hmm. From our homepage, would you advise that we say, okay, I do coaching for creatives, for instance, now go to my creative coaching page, or would you point to like, okay, book a call with me? I, I want to test people. I like, I don't want just, I don't want to get a call on, on a call with just anybody. It's up to you. Like if you don't feel like you have a lot of traffic and you kind of just want to talk to anybody who comes then that's fine. But for most people, I think what you want is to have people, you want them to self-identify. You want them to raise their hand and say, yes, this is interesting to me. This is for me. And so I recommend that if you are publicly offering coaching, so not through a back end, like having a conversation with somebody and then having a back end page that you show them, which is something we do in the incubator when we're just getting started, um, that you don't necessarily have like a page on your website about coaching, but you have like a private page about it. Um, and so you'd have a conversation with somebody first and you'd know if they were a good candidate and you would give them the page because they are a good candidate. If you have a publicly facing page, I recommend an application on the page, not just book a call. And the application can be very, very simple. Just like, you know, in your, in your case, you've talked about people having like uh, being too fresh, like the, the, um, the grief is too fresh and they need to be in a place where they can really handle this kind of work. So you might ask, how recently did you lose your person, you know? Um, and it's just a simple question. It's not, you know, you could have two or three questions. It's just kind of are the test for you of whether this person is appropriate or not. And if they're not, you can redirect them, you know, get the, you get the application, you go, Hey, I'm you know so glad to hear from you. It sounds like you're maybe not quite ready for this. So here's an, a resource for you that, you know, and I would love to work with you in the future. And then you check back with them in six months, you know, All right, I'm going to dive into questions here because, again, as I said, there are a lot. Um, and Victoria and Charlene, please stick with me here. And if you have anything to add or any questions that you want to bring up 
in relation to what I'm talking about, unmute and, and let me know. Um, all right, so, as I said, I can't, I can't get all through all of these individually, but I will do the best I can here. There's one I wanted to highlight in particular because it's so indicative of the overall direction that I saw, um, which is from Kina, who was asking about tenuously related topics and wanting them all on one site. And the reasons why she wanted that were really revealing. So, or they said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't, uh, I don't mean to pick a gender there. Um, <clears throat> how to differ, she, uh, they ask, how to differently how to integrate highly different themes together, like if the thread that unites them is tenuous, different subjects, different art styles, potentially different audiences. I'd love to have one website unite everything. It really seems like I need different sites, but that means different businesses and major burnout. Been there, done that. I'm assuming this needs a personal brand, like an actor, producer, director, lap, rap star, poet, painter, famous people, hmm, right? So here's what came up to me as I read Kina's question. First of all, None of us here are rock stars. And even those people who are the slash, you know, this slash that slash that uh, have only a very few super fans who actually care about all of those things. Most people don't care about all of those things. They also have staff who can manage all of those things for you. So when I look at the this desire to represent everything, different art styles, different subjects, different, you know, different businesses, different media, uh, what I want everybody to ask themselves is, do you actually want to support all of these different threads of your creative life as a public part of essentially your business, your creative business? Because that requires a lot of work. You know, It's not just, I'm gonna put it on my website. It's gonna sit on your website, nobody's gonna come there. Nobody goes to websites without you doing a whole bunch of stuff to get people to go to there, you know? so. What is the point of having a website or having a web page for something if um, it's not for somebody? Again, websites are not the Wikipedia of you. They don't have to contain everything about you in order for them to be authentic to you. What they're for is which audiences do you want to feed? Which audiences do you want to uh, build and engage with on an ongoing basis? And assuming you're a professional, where do you want to make money? So there's not, it's not a matter of hiding what you are or like, you know, um, burying it or something like that. Like, it's not okay to have all those things. It's totally okay. But just think about like, what, you know, what do you want out of this? Um, I had a conversation with a coaching client yesterday who was talking about some similar things. And he was saying, he was talking about the audience I want to cult cultivate versus the one that's being cultivated. So he took, he was sort of accidentally cultivating an audience in an area that he likes, he's interested in it, but it's just not his main focus. It's not what he really wants to be doing uh, with most of his, certainly with his professional time. And so he kind of put that stuff someplace, it's on, on medium in, case, in this case, where it's very easily accessible. He can still do whatever he wants with it, but it doesn't sort of take over his main persona online. And I know people do not want to hear this. <laughs> you want to have everything there and every, you know, people, everybody who comes to your site be like, I see everything about you, you know, all of the things. And I understand, you know, the depth of your experience and history and persona, but most people, people don't come to websites. Again, they don't come for you. They come for them. They come for themselves. And so what are the things that they need out of your website? Who are the people you want to engage and bring in and make feel welcome and cultivate? Who are the people you want to cultivate? This is the number one question you need to ask about your web presence and your social media presence for that matter, any other presence. Who do you want to actually actively cultivate? Who are you ready to put energy into? That's really the big question. Okay, so sub questions to that. Uh, there was a question from Leone, which was, I thought, really good, but, you know, um, which I thought it was funny. Um, Victoria, you echoed this in your very first statement that you don't want to be pigeonholed. Don't, be, no, don't pigeonhole me. But Leone said the same thing. I don't, don't pigeonhole me. I don't want pigeon, pigeonholes are for pigeons. Um, so again, the, the, the same question here, the first step is deciding what do you want out of this? What is the goal? What do you want people to do? It's a, it's a store. Like it's a, it's like a, a virtual storefront. It's a, it's a brand, you know, um, some examples of 
kind of how you manage these various threads in different ways. Uh, uh, somebody I know was talking, who is a heavy, was a heavy Twitter user and is very, very dismayed about the way Twitter is going right now, moved to Mastodon. It hasn't, I don't think, closed their Twitter, but has moved over to Mastodon and um, was saying that, uh, they were saying that their audience size on Mastodon is 10% of what it is on Twitter, but their engagement on Mastodon is five times what it is on Twitter. So they gave an example of a post, well, I don't know what you call it on Mastodon, a mast, I don't know, um, that was just sort of a funny toss off that they posted like a week and a half ago and it's still getting engagement. People are still responding to it now. That would never happen on Twitter. It would just disappear all done, right? And what they're there for, and they're a writer, is to build community with other people who are like-minded, who care about similar things, um, and just have fun with them and have that sense of like, this is the, these are my people and whatever. And yes, that will feed into their writing and feed into their writing community and, and potentially get people interested in their books down the road, but it's not uh, transactional in that way. So they know why they're showing up there. They're showing up there for that community um, above selling books, right? It's not a, a Strictly speaking, it's not strictly a marketing channel, right? Um, another example, Tara McMullen, who was my first business coach, um, when I first encountered her, had a web, you know, business coach, everything's business coaching, but she's also a huge Trekkie. And so like her call to action button on her, you know, she could sign up for a newsletter or whatever was make it so. And I was like, I am home, you know, like there was, I, I saw myself in this and I was like, that's awesome. Like that's personality coming through in my course, authentic visibility. We talk about your weird colors, which doesn't mean they're actually weird, but the, it comes from a, a talk by Wendy McNaughton, where she talked about all of her different things that she had in her background as a Venn diagram with, you know, different colors. And when all those colors overlap, they make a really weird color in the middle, you know, and that color, the weird color, that's her. And that's why she is who she is now. So one of Tara's weird colors is being a Trekkie. And so she allowed that to shine through and talked about that. And that made me feel at home, you know, and made me know that I was like in the right place. Um, another example, my gardening. So I am a, I'm an avid gardener. I don't share about this very much anywhere. Um, not because I'm ashamed of it, because it's just not relevant. Like you don't have to share everything that you do. And so um I certainly, every once in a while, I break down and I post a picture of vegetables on Instagram or something. But other than that, I'm like, it's pretty private for me. But recently I have started using gardening as a powerful metaphor for business building. And so I've started using it. I used, I've developed a whole webinar, which I've now not used anymore and I have to use it somewhere else. Anyway, it's a very cool metaphor. And I've talked about it lots of different ways about how growing things and understanding the site specifics, like how inputs lead to outputs using a gardening metaphor has been really powerful for me. So I haven't used it and now I am using it. So that's another example of how you use these different things. All right, moving on to a new topic. If anybody has any questions about that, feel free. Um, yes, I, I was going to say that the, the answer to the question speaks to the thing you talk about put out the work that you want to keep doing. Don't put out work that you did, you know, two years ago that you're glad is over that you never want to do again, because that's what people will ask you to do. So part of the push to not be pigeonholed and put out there what's important to us, especially as Ellie pointed out in the chat about multi-passionate, multi-creatives is that um, I want that work I'm doing out there so that I can do more of it and can support myself or, you know, financially it becomes more viable. And so I think that's yeah. one of the, one of the, the ways filter. we have to answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. That's a filter. I think that's a very good point. Yep. I have a no, uh, a rule called no cowboys for my, all of my illustration students, which is this, if you hate drawing cowboys, do not put any cowboys in your portfolio. Don't put cowboys in your portfolio. If you hate drawing cowboys. Or even if you used to like it, but now you're over it, get them out of there. Because the number one thing an art director will ask for is a freaking cowboy. Like whatever you hate most, that's what they're going to ask for. Take it all out. If you have a portfolio of three items, fine. Just don't put any cowboys in there. So that's the no cowboys rule. 
I see Sarah asking about the Wendy McNaughton talk. It was live at, uh, she was doing a like presentation at uh, a college here. So I saw it live. I don't know if she has it online anywhere. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here we get back into this question of multiple websites for different offers. And there were a lot of different uh, angles we took into this. And so I just want to kind of repeat those. If you have something like, and this is my client, um, uh, uh, Samantha Clark, who is also in the incubator, was talking about this idea of coaching, but also she's a, she's a published author and she also is a, a wonderful um, visual artist. And if an incubator member would like to post her site here, that would be great. Anyway, she has a beautiful website. She And she has, uh, we talked about the idea of having sub pages for each of those areas as we were just talking about with Charlene. Um, I also was saying to her, like, so she recently had a large exhibition um, and that was her main focus for a couple of months. She could rotate her homepage emphasis to that exhibition if she wanted to and have that be the main thing people are seeing when they're arriving at her homepage. And then coaching is right underneath that. But for the most part, again, who is the who are the most sort of vulnerable members of your community, the people you want to be cultivating the most in her case, it's coaching clients. And so that's the thing that needs to be prominently there. However, it's really important that she's also an artist and an author because that's why people come to her. That's why they trust her. And so those things do belong together. So I had another question related to that, which is what about websites for creators who, for example, write for kids, but teach and blog for adults also? Um, and the question is, number one, who are you selling to? Are the children coming to your website? <laughs> if the children are not coming to your website, if you're selling to librarians and parents, then go ahead and speak to adults in your website. Just make sure it feels fun and, and, and childlike, you know, has that, you know, that feeling. If you literally are talking about other things for adults, then again, it comes to this question of like, who do you want to feed? Like where, you know, where's your emphasis? What do you want to be doing? Uh, making sure that the things are if you start putting a lot of stuff on a website, not like Victoria's where you have two very clear uh, paths to take, or, you know, for that, for that matter with um, Charlene's main website, where it's, you know, event organizers and people who are grieving, like that's a very clear path. And you can identify yourself very clearly. I am this, or I am that. And we talked about with Victoria, she has super fans who want everything. Those people are going to click everything anyway. We don't need to worry about them. They're going to click every single tab in your entire site. So don't worry about them. They will take care of themselves. But the, most people will have like a oh, direction that they want to go. Um, so asking yourself, who, again, who do you want to feed? Who, who are the people who you want to be paying attention? And then the second question though, in this particular case is, is this, is your material unsuitable for children? Like some of, some things are like for children. Some things are definitely not for children. In that case, I would really recommend separating those things much more firmly. And if it's like, we're talking like really unsuitable for children, then we're talking pen name, you know, like it's important to separate those things um, in a way that keeps kids safe, uh, that they're going to, if they show up and want to check out your books, that they're not going to stumble on something. Um, but that's a pretty rare case. I mean, in most cases, Children's, children's book authors are maybe speaking to other children's book authors or to, you know, agents or to, you know, publishers or to librarians, like that's their audience. Uh, and they don't have a children's website. They have a, ch a website that's really mostly aimed at the adults who buy the books. Um, okay. Uh, so the point that I'm trying to get there is like, don't combine totally different things unless they support one another. Uh, finding a non-distracting place for your hobbies because you just want to do hobbies online, like my friend who's on Mastodon, um, my other client who's talking about moving this one area of his interest onto Medium and off of his site. So separating those things out. So having, but then you you are maintaining both of those things, and that is your choice. If if you if you have the energy for that hobby, that that is your choice. Michi, I noticed that you put in a question about um, having a you have a, a website that's mostly about comics and illustration, which fit together very well, but then you also do music and you're like, should I have a hidden page for that? Yes. I mean, it's not necessarily hidden. It's just not linked on your navigation. Um, and then you have a homepage for your music and people can go there directly. And there may be times that it comes up in your blog or whatever, and you can link to it. And, you know, it's not, again, it's not about hiding. It's just about making sure that people can identify where they need to be and find what they need from you quickly.
because that's how you're going to have more fans and make more sales for those things that you decide are most important. Uh, so like thinking broadly about what how those things fit together, I had a question from Sign about novels and comics and weaving. Novels and comics feel like those things can go together. They're both about reading fiction. Uh, they're in different genres, but they're both genre. You know, I definitely think that as an author, you can you can build a world in which those things fit together. I certainly, as an author, I, my books are all over the place. There's no theme to them particularly, and that's a problem for me. But you know, it's a problem I have to deal with. The weaving, though, I feel like that's a separate thing. People who certainly there's going to be a little bit of crossover, and it's not that you can't mention those things in different places, but that you have this, you know, a problem with like people who are coming for weaving. They want to see the weaving. They want that up front. Sign, did you want to ask a question about that? Yeah. What about like legacy content? Like I used to publish an online magazine for weavers and I used to do a podcast for weavers and those resources are still heavily used by weavers because there's not a lot of internet content. So I feel responsible to keep that information available. Mm -hmm. um, would that be again, the like hidden page on my website and separate yeah, websites just, for those? Yeah. I would just, you don't have to have a separate website, but have a, a like a non-linked website, you know, sort of sub section of your site that's not on your navigation, but that mm -hmm. if anybody's linking to these pages, they get there. I have that. I have that exact same thing with comics. I used to teach about comics a lot and I had a lot of content about how to make comics that's on my site. You guys never see it, but if you search for how to make mini comics, that my hit, my page is like one of the top hits people come in for that. So I, I, I use that technique and, um, and that post that, or that page that's there is 10 or 12 years old. Or, you know, I've like had to I try to like, I don't do a lot of work to it, but I try to like make it not break, <laughs> you know, and that's about it. Um, but it, cause it's a resource people use. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, and the other thing I was thinking is like, you probably could link to uh, external less related things in like the footer or in an about page, if you wanted to like, in an about page, when you get to the part where you're like, and I, my other things are this and my hobby's that, you can like link to your hobby page or, you know, again, like there's ways to link those things together and talk about who you are in a way that doesn't distract from your main mission. Um, narrowing things down on your site. Same question, basically, like the, this is, you, my question is, why do you want so many offers? <laughs> can you really support all of those things? If you have a homepage with multiple calls to action, like, can you serve all the people who click on those things, even if you could get them to do it? Just ask yourself, like, do I want to have people clicking on these things and asking for them? Because whether or not you get them on one, one website, it is creating different lines of business for you. And, you know, multi, you know narrowing those things down is going to really help you. Um, people asked about uh, multiple calls to action on a homepage, I would say less is more like the better, the more you can narrow those things down. Like we looked at with uh, Victoria and with Charlene, the better, um, and try to keep your navigation down to about five tabs, five to six at the most. Uh, I am breaking this rule right now. It's driving me insane. Like I have to fix that, but we keep adding stuff and then not having the time to reorganize. As I said, it's a living document, not an archive. Uh, about pages. Uh, quickly, I want just to, to say, just as your website is not really about you, it's about the user, your about page is also not actually about you. It's telling people that they are in the right place. So it's meeting people where they are and saying like, hey, you, I know you, I'm like you, I have these things for you. So thinking about how to help people self-identify right at the top of the about page. As artists, we tend to put and should put more about like, and I did this exhibition, I did these things and blah, blah, blah. But again, people go, the about page is the second most trafficked page on a site in general. People go to the, and think why you go to an about page. Everybody think, why do you go to an about page? When you're on somebody's website, think for a second, why do you click about? It might be because you are uh, looking for contact information or something like that, right? But mostly it's about, well, this is pretty interesting and intriguing. Hmm. I wonder if this person really is what I think they are. I wonder if this person really can do what I think they can do. 
Um, and it's really about finding out if you are like a culture match with the company or with the person who you're checking out. And that means that you have to say up front, like, here's our culture. And I see you, you are like this. And if people aren't like this, they'll go like, oh, no, I'm not. And they'll close and go away. And yay, that's fabulous. You want them to go away, right? You really want people to be able to say, yeah, this is me. I get it. And oh, this person gets me so deeply. And this is where, you know, there'd be a pair, like a, a sentence about, you know, Star Trek. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, totally. You know, Tara is also like a band geek and she's like all this, you know, religion major. And I'm like, all right, a business coach who is a religion major that I can learn from this person, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, that's like, that's the thing. You, you go for a little bit of a deeper dive, but from the filter of people going like, is this the right fit? And that is the way you need to be thinking thinking it through. So um, it'll help you sort of reorient again, a match expectations at the top. Have people say, yep, yeah, that's me. I need to be here. Then talk about yourself afterwards. Talk about them first and then you. Um, somebody asked about still, if they're still experimenting with offers, what should you keep off of your site? And I would suggest that other places are probably better for experimentation than a website. Like, let me try this offer. Like, try it on Medium, try it on social media, like test things out on a, like a Facebook group or something and try to see how it feels before you're putting it on your website as like the thing that you do. That's not a problem if you're just kind of like, here's a new offer, let me try it. That's fine. But again, if you're putting stuff on your website, you have to be promoting it for, for it to have any effect. No one goes to websites. No one finds websites unless you're getting behind it and getting it out there in one way or another. And so if you're not going to get behind something, don't put it on there. It's just not worth it. It's not worth the, the effort of, of putting it together. And you don't want the results that you're going to get if you do get people to something that you're not, you're not ready to be behind. All right. I think I've mostly covered what I needed to cover today. I hope I got to most people's questions one way or another, but of course, you know, we will have another creative business design lab session next month. And I invite you to that. We will have a new topic. I believe we're going to be talking about the dollars or the pounds or the rupees. We're going to be talking about the money um, and how money affects our decision-making and, you know, how to, how to make sure that we're uh, taking care of ourselves financially um, and, uh, can't guarantee that because I don't have my guests pinned down yet, but I'm pretty sure that's what we're doing next month. It's going to be December 14th. I want to say, look for invitations, um, in your inbox. And this is the kind of thing it's going to be a little loosey goosey, a little stuff, you know, a little, whatever we are running. We are going to put up, um, replays. So you'll get an email probably tomorrow with a replay and, uh, Thank everybody for being here. Victoria, Charlene, thank you for being here. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.